Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Winston's Weekly, covering all things property. I'm Manny Anton, your host for today's property chat. Winston, welcome back. Thank you. Okay, let's get started as we usually do with the US markets. Another big week. Um, President Joe Biden's pulled out of the election race and we've also seen uh, a continuing sell down in, uh, in big tech in favour of the more cyclical sectors and the small cap. Uh, small cap names, which is fantastic to see. So obviously the market looking looking for a little bit of value now and they're starting to go down the curve a little bit. Uh, there were also some economic data points released this week which continue to point to uh, a cooling outlook. Uh, so we had uh, US PMI manufacturing index. That was lower than expectations. Again, pointing to a possible contraction uh, as new orders production and inventories all declined. Uh, so that seemed to Im impact the... Uh, uh, the U.S. markets uh, sort of midweek. Um, uh, you know, Wednesday uh, Wednesday report in the U.S. also showed that new home sales came in lighter than economists had expected for the month of June. So, uh, all of what, what what all of this means is that traders, uh, according to some of the measures, are now attaching almost a 100% probability of a rate cut in September. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts on on the latest? Well, it's primarily on the back of that. Uh, that expectation that this, this rotation is taking place out of the high-flying Magnificent Seven and, and the tech stocks and into um, the small caps and interest, interest rate sensitive sectors um, because lower interest rates should benefit um, those, the, the, the businesses in those sectors. So we're seeing that rotation. Uh, but again, we have to wait for more data to come out uh, and, and there is time until uh, the Fed decides whether or not they're going to cut, but um, the indications are that there, there will be a cut. Um, in Australia, uh, whilst uh, it is a slightly different scenario, but we'll go into that shortly. Okay. Um, well, let's turn our attention then to, uh, to domestic markets. Um, uh, let's look at office. Now, the reason I bring office up is this week we've seen some numbers uh, in the press and also some further discussion around uh, the state of vacancy rates in office uh, property particularly and and specifically there were some um, some numbers that came out of Melbourne which suggest that Melbourne's actually you know that 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 um, uh, that vacancy is now sitting around close to 20 percent you know in the office space what do you what's what, what are your thoughts on that I mean I guess it's not surprising that it, office is weaker but yeah. it, it, it shouldn't really be a surprise office is, is has got a number of headwinds uh, working from home um, situation continues uh, to be s Mondays and Fridays being very low in terms of people coming into the city, into the CBD. Um, I, I, I actually park it in a railway car park uh, and I catch the train in. And Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, unless I'm there by a specific time, the car park's full. Um, in uh, this morning, um, there were 91 spots available mm -hmm. in 160 uh, car parks. So uh, and maybe the weather has something to do with it as well, the rain keeping people away. Um, so office does have uh, some issues, um, but we're also, what's happening, there is some sort of rotation happening in the REIT sector because the high flyer in, in the REIT sector over the year has been Goodman Group, which is 40% of the index. Um, and that stock has come down this week. Um, and I, I think there is going to be some rotational. Um, the money hasn't quite made its way into uh, the other stocks as well. Um, but I think after the results, post the results, there will be some flows going into the smaller, uh, smaller cap REITs around the place uh, once the results are, uh, are out through August. And is that just a function of... Uh uh, Goodman's being priced, uh, you know, sort of to, to, to perfection uh, versus some of the others? Or is it more a case when you're saying there might be some rotation out to get exposure to different sectors that Goodman is offering? Well, it's just that it's been such a strong performer. Um, it, it, it was up for the year some 50, 60 um, percent. And just to show the impact, a week ago, the index, the REIT index was up 8 and 8.4% for the month to date. As of yesterday, it's down 25 So 
uh, and, and Goodman's is a big component of that, and it's been coming down, so it does impact on, on the sector overall. Sure, the other stocks, the other larger stocks, um, have come down as well, but Goodman's is the one that, that, that everyone, particularly the general equity guys who want an exposure to property, have been doing it via Goodman and Goodman alone, um, and so they're taking some off the table now, um, given where, where it's been over the last 12 months. But is that coming out of Goodman, as you're suggesting, and going into other property names, or is it leaving the sector? Well, looking, looking at the other stocks that have come down as well, I don't think we're seeing uh, the rotation take place as yet. What we're seeing is a decline in the exposures to Goodman. Uh, as a precursor, I think it's probably fund managers are waiting for the results to determine where they're going to put their money um, after the results. Okay, understood. All right, well, let's uh, move on to the next point. Now, last week uh, we discussed um, lifestyle communities. At that point, they had been beaten within an inch of their lives. Uh, what's the latest in this space? Uh, the stock seems to have settled at around the, the mid $9 level. Uh, there's been no new news one way or the other in terms of the action um, uh, that's been taken by a number of residents at their Woolert property in Victoria. Um, and that's going to a tribunal, uh, not, not a court, it's a tribunal as such. Um, and uh, Lifestyle have actually asked for it to go directly to uh, the High Court, the Supreme Court, to get a ruling rather than, the, the, than wait on the legal aspects of whether um, deferred management agreements, DMAs, are actually legal which have been in place at Infinitum for, for many, many years, and other entities also use them. So we're, they're, they're banking on the basis that they have been in place, they are legal, whereas um, the, 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 the residents in Willert that are kicking up a fuss are saying it, it's, it, it's illegal to have a, a DMAs in place. Okay, understood. Um, all right, well, let's move on to our uh, next one, which is our uh, Stock of the Week segment. Good. So, Winston, what stock have you uh, chosen for us this week? The stock I've chosen um, to spotlight is, is primarily um, hotel property investments. The code is HPI. It is a component of uh, the AREIT 300 index. Um, it has about 194 million um, securities on issues on issue. It has a market cap of 650 million. Um, it pays a half yearly uh, distribution of nine and a half cents, so that's uh, 19 cents for the year, and it's on a yield of 5.8% based on the closing price last night of $3.30. Now, the interesting thing is that um, uh, a Charter Hall, uh, through the Charter Hall Wholesale uh, Trust uh, Management, uh, own 17.15 per cent of um, HPI. Uh, hotels uh, are doing re very well. There's been uh, a lot of transactions in the hotel uh, sector, so valuations are, uh, are believable in terms of what prices are, are changing. Um, last year, uh, HPI had revenue of uh, 79.9 million on which they made a net profit after tax of uh, 3.6 million. Um, and uh, it's in a good property subsector. Management's very, very good. Um, it pays a, a, a decent distribution. Um, I think it's something worth, uh, worth looking at going forward. Okay, fantastic. Um, all right, well, um, let's uh, look to next week. Uh, so what should we be expecting on the property front, anything any material news we, we need to be aware of that uh, the market's waiting on, or is it...? Well, as I've said over the last couple of weeks, uh, stocks are in blackout mode primarily because the results are due um, um, in August, and we should then start seeing um, some of the results filter through from the end of next week uh, through, the, through the following week. So all of those will be looked at with interest in terms of the valuations, particularly in office, um, in terms of the outlook that management is, is, is sort of working out um, uh, what's going to happen over the next uh, 12 months or so. And so that should give uh, you know, some guidance to, to investors going forward. Okay. Winston, thank you for your time today as always and uh, your insights. It's and, a pleasure. 
Excellent. And uh, we will be back with another edition of Winston's Weekly next Friday. Until then, have a great day and a fabulous week next week. We'll see you then. Bye.